Hello and welcome to the third episode of What, Where, When, the quiz where the audience set the questions along with a few of my own in order to baffle our assembled brains trust. Today we have Nick Gates. Uh, good evening. Hello, and Dan Peake. Hi, David. And Lewis Murphy. Hello there. And as two of you were involved with the code-breaking quizzes, is it is it true that you've been offered a job at GCHQ? I start on Monday. You start on Monday? Oh. Oh, or I couldn't retell you. I should have said that, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now you're already sacked before you even oh. turned out. <laughs> Sorry, GCHQ. And Lewis... Uh, Lewis, as you are currently in Finland, uh, I can confirm that you are currently the world's most northerly quizzer. Oh, wow. that's a, that's a very fancy title. And, and, until Monday, because that's when Björk goes to her pub quiz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get going with the main game. So, uh, what happens is we have a reel at wheel of 13 questions you have one minute of thinking time to try and work out the logical explanation behind each of these little mysteries and then uh, it's lewis's turn to be team captain so you have to uh, give me an answer at the end of the time one little extra rule if you know an answer straight away uh, one of you can shout answer and try and claim the answer straight away and if you're correct then you get a bonus minute to use on another question that you might be more struggling with uh, so that's the board. Uh, Lewis, please uh, pick your first number. Uh, let's go with number five. Five is live for our first question today, which is this. During the Victorian era, why did hard-up homeowners occasionally climb onto their roof with several live geese? It's nothing to do with uh, insulating the attic. Or something like that with goose droppings or something like that uh something to do with the chimney maybe drop something down the chimney would you drop a goose down a chimney <laughs> oh you could uh, clear it uh, it's like a sort of not... goose feathers could uh could wipe it couldn't it they'd not be happy about it no it wouldn't be happy about it. <laughs> cheaper than a than a than a urchin probably <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's a good point they didn't have child chimney sweepers okay I, know, I think that's not a bad you, guess, actually. But then if you couldn't afford one... Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Oh, uh, hard up, I know this. Yeah, several geese. Uh, I suppose if the first one flies off, you might need a second one. <laughs> <laughs> or if the first one gets stuck halfway down, you need to wedge another one in. Or oh, just... Oh, yeah, it's just uh, horrible. <laughs> okay, time's up. Lewis, what's your answer? Uh, we're going to go with to sweep the chimney. Yes. Yep, that's absolutely right. <laughs> well done, uh, Dan. I think it was, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. If you uh, couldn't afford a chimney sweep, then uh, according to QI, um, that's what they would do. That's where we got it from. That fact from one of their books. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it's a nice little story that. Okay, one to you. Uh, I don't like the way this is going already. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Nick, why don't you choose the next one for us? Number 13. Number 13. Okay, here we go. For most card games, the aces are generally regarded as the most important cards in the pack, but it hasn't always been this way. Which major historical event of the late 18th century is said by experts to have been a catalyst for this change? Well, that's interesting. I know... The ace of, I know it's sort of the ace of spades. It used to be the the, the card um, that you send off and you get a stamp on it because uh, because card games were card packs. Cards were ta that showed up with cards cards taxed. Um, then maybe that's why the ace is high because it's uh, uh, it's, 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 it shows uh, the expense of the, the cards. Um, Major uh, historical event though. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember what, start, what started it. Uh, late 18th century. 1780s. 1799, that was in the late 18th century. Uh, it was. Um, <laughs> Napoleon? Would that be around Napoleon time? Uh, Might be. Spanish Armada's too early. That's too early. Um, 
Henry the eight. That's much better. Time is up. Right, Lewis. Any ideas? Uh, I'm just going to go with um, my guess of the um, American Revolution. Okay, I'll tell you that's not the right answer. Yeah. So, um, if aces are the, currently the most important, yeah. What do you think it would be would have been the most important before that? The king. So what sort of thing would have caused the aces, the lowest cards in the deck, to now be more important than the king? Is it something like the French Revolution, where they were obviously beheading kings and so on? Ah. Uh, that was my second guess, but I convinced myself <laughs> to not knowing when that was. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, it, the French Revolution uh, was definitely... Uh, late 18th century, it was 1789 to 1799. Uh, ah, bad luck, but I'm quite pleased that I've got one on the board at least. So, uh, there we go, got some blood on each side. Uh, okay, Dan, pick a number, please. Number one, please. Number one tends to be one of the easiest ones historically. Let's see what it is. When leaving Tatooine, Anakin Skywalker was warned about this, as was Bambi when escaping the Hunters. If only Lot's wife and Orpheus had followed Noel's advice, much trouble would have been saved. What action? Wow. Um, oh. What was Noel's advice? Do or no deal? It's Orpheus. Don't look back because it's, it's the... Um, Leaving the oh, underworld. Ah, yeah, yeah. So oh, is that Noel? Oasis. Noel Gallagher. Right. Yes, I was yeah. along the Noel Edmonds line as well. <laughs> uh, I don't remember this about anything to do with Star. Is it Star Wars or Star Trek? Have hang on, Star Wars. Yes. Uh, or Bambi. So when I think about it, it does sound familiar in both those cases. I mean, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it does sound like the right thing. No, I think you're right. Um, I, know, I, knew, I know about Lot's wife, that's an Orpheus just about. Um, I know Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt, but I don't yeah. know why. No. An Orpheus was uh, to leave the underworld, but you can look back. Um, okay. Otherwise, to be stay there forever, I forget the story. Okie dokie, Lewis. Any ideas? Uh, we're going with Don't Look Back. That's correct. <laughs> yes. So, uh, any ideas what Lot's wife was about? No. No. Well, uh, the, it, when it was uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, those cities were being destroyed. She was told not to look back, uh, and she did, and that's why she got turned into a pillar of salt. And uh, Orpheus has various different slight variations on it, uh, but uh, from what I remember from my uh, research was that, uh, yeah, trying to escape the underworld, and he was holding the hand of Eurydice, Eurydice uh, behind, and uh, one version of it is that he got out of the underworld, but then he looked back and Eurydice hadn't quite left, and so um, uh, she, she lost her he lost her because of that uh anyway uh, looking back was the the thing uh and um yeah bambi's mother uh was, was says don't look back don't look back that's her spoiler alert her last line in the film. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right it's so one to you okay we're back with you lewis please uh let's go keep it symmetrical number nine number nine okay, okay. Uh, this has been sent in by chris dixon what eventually contains 178 feet, 81 heads, 46 wings, and eight udders? I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, trial. Um... <laughs> right, so... I'm just trying... Wow, okay. Um, eight udders would suggest four... Uh, would suggest uh, two cows. Um... Is it something you... like Noah's Ark? Because lots I, of I, animals went in there. Where one millipede would have more than 178 feet. I'm presuming. Uh, it, I, I, I'm wondering if it's a, a gallows of 178 feet in length somehow. But I don't think. Is it, is it? 
Is it going to be all the gifts in uh, on the hey, first Maiden day of Christmas? Yes, yes, I think you're right. Yeah, I made some milking, and then the empty cows would have that number of others between them. I think it's great. There's lots of birds at the beginning. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you're onto it there. <laughs> all right, then we'll go with that. Okay, Liz. Uh, Going to go with Dan's answer of uh, the gifts from the twelve days of Christmas. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So interestingly, both Chris when he sent me this question originally, and me when I looked at a, a very similar Only Connect question a couple of years back, made the same mistake, which is that actually cows one other but four teats. Ah, uh, each, okay. Each of those teats is sort of has its own like milking system, but the the the, the thing that it's it's in is called one adder. Ah. Um, so yes, that's it. If you do all the math, I believe that that's what you end up with. Hence, all of the lots of wings and and the eight cows. Is, is, it, is it one thing or another? No. Oh. <laughs> 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 Okay, uh, Dan, I think it's you to pick next. Number seven, please. Maybe it isn't, but that's what we're going with anyway. Okay, number seven. Uh, this has been sent in by a new writer, Antonis Lalatzas. Thank you very much for your question. What's in the box? The three most uh, common types of these in the UK all bear prime numbers. When kept in the loop, it can save lives, but becomes dangerous if too well built. Many people have blown this when overcharged, both practically and metaphorically. Wow. Is it type, um, of, is it type of knot or something? Um, well, what can you blow when overcharged? I mean, it's going to say bank balance, but... <laughs> bat battery... Both practically and metaphorically. Um, blow your lid, blow your top. Why would they bear prime numbers? What what have we got? What so two five seven two three five seven eleven. Seven eleven. And the three commonest types are oh, the three commonest type. Uh it's not a fire extinguisher. Uh, they, have, they have loops in it to keep the handles. Uh, you can't. You can't. Um, it becomes dangerous if too well built. Not quite sure it really works, but um, blimey! I'm looking for a little pig. Answer. Okay, okay, that's it. Uh, Lewis, what are you going to pick? Oh, I haven't got a clue. I guess we're just going to go with fire extinguishers. Gotcha. Oh. Uh. Okay. So the most common types of fuse in the UK are 3 amp, 5 amp, and 13 amp. Yep. Uh. When, when kept in an electrical circuit, a loop, it can yep. save lives. But if you put in a fuse that's too well built, it can carry too much current. It becomes dangerous because it then won't blow yep. when, when you have a, a current surge. And if uh, over, literally overcharged with that electricity, you yep. will have blown the fuse. Mm. Um, and then people are they are said to blow a fuse if they're angry about something, such as if they've been overpriced for something, yeah. i.e. overcharged. All right? That's a good question. Yep. Good uh, answer when you found it out. So that's a good question. Yes. Yeah. I think that was fair. So I'm not, not too unhappy about being only one point behind there. Uh, okay. Uh, Nick, I think let's uh, go with you next Number time. Number three. Number three. Okay, here we go. When Richard Whiteley died in 2005, several obituaries mentioned that he was the second most seen face on British television. So who at the time was adjudged to be number one? Although still alive, they are not seen on air as much, but the record is thought to remain intact. Right, I think it's one of two, uh, two, one of two answers here. It's either the Queen, because they used to, on every night, they used to uh, do a closing down uh, uh, transmission of the Queen. Uh, but it could be the test card woman. Oh! Ha-ha! Uh, uh, yes. Carol Hersey. That's my initial thought, was. but it could be test card girl, yeah. Um, but still use test card girl. So... It, it's but not, not nearly be... as much, because no. they, they don't go off air every night. No, so. not at all. 
It's not going to be Cara Vorderman, is it? Just from the same show, but more shots of her? Oh no, well, I don't think no. no. Fair enough. So, does anyone think one way or the other? Because um, I, I think don't have any I, my, my gut is saying the test card girl. Who I believe is Carol Hersey. But I might be a bit wrong on that. If it is her, I think a test card girl would probably suffice. Yeah. Okay. Lewis, who are you going to go for? Uh, we're going to go for uh, the test card girl. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and you got the name as well. Uh, I've seen it wrongly spelt in the trivia book as Carol Hershey, which is an actress. So it's <laughs> something completely different. Carol Hersey is a uh, costume designer. Hmm. And uh, so do you know why she got the job? She was the daughter of someone who worked at the BBC or no That's one right. Yeah. Yeah, now the daughter of, of the BBC uh, engineer. Yeah. And, and I can actually, through the magic of television, uh, show you what she looks like now. Yeah. <laughs> Is it true uh, that she was yeah. left handed and they flipped the photo? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, uh, but do you know why she's playing Noughts and Crosses? Uh, it's something to do is is the X in the middle is a uh, is uh, a a coordinate or something. Yes, like that. Yes, supposedly the X is the middle of the picture. Although if you do look on the left hand side, it's not really quite in the middle. From it looks what a bit I can low, tell. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it looks a bit low and to the right to me. But anyway, that's the story. Uh, yeah, she's thought to have been on air for something like seventy thousand hours, uh, whereas Richard Whiteley uh, did. Or something like over ten thousand editions of Countdown. So even if, sort of allowing for various other things, you know, half an hour shows, forty-five minute shows, whatever, uh, he won't come close to seventy thousand hours. In fact, uh, she's been denied an entry in the Guinness Book of Records because it's thought that no one will ever beat that. <laughs> it's, uh, she, it would be the equivalent of spending eight continuous hours of uh, years of your life on air. Wow, uh, I, don't th I don't think even David Dimbleby will uh, beat that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and she's still got the doll. Uh, it's called Bubbles. In case you ever wanted to know, oh, that makes so it even are. more terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, edging up to be a very familiar scoreline somehow. Uh, Lewis, <laughs> let's go with you, please. Uh, let's go with number two. Number two. Okie doke. Here we go. B and R lose one, while E and G gain one. The other 22 are unaffected. What procedure has happened? Right, it's these letters. I mean, it's, I mean it, it, surely it won't be uh, the, the uh, it's going to scrabble the, how many tiles of each letter in a, in a, in a standard 100-tile bag, is it? Surely. Maybe. Yeah, the 22. So hold on. The 26 letters there, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm thinking in, in a scroll bag, there's the blank as well. Oh, that's true. That's, that's very true. Yes, good, good point. Um, so is it uh, seat allocations for councils or elections? Um, it's. Uh... Uh, it's 22, so it can't be European uh, seats because there's 20, 27, 28. Um, I, is it a word one? It's got to be to do with words, and I just can't think. No. Okay, Lewis, any ideas? Ugh. For lack of anything better, I'm just going to say uh, the, the, the resorting of the number of tiles in a set of Scrabble. No. The answer is they've been turned into lower case. So do you see mm. what the answer is now? Is it pen strokes? No. Number of enclosed regions. Ah. Yeah, that's right. So the B loses one of its enclosed regions and the R loses only one. And when uh, it happens on the other side, they gain one. That's right. So the little islands that they got there. Very clever. Good. Well done. Good. Back in the race. We're back in the race. Come on, team. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go with Dan for the next one, please. Uh, number 11, please. Number 11. 
Uh, this is sent in by another new writer to the program. It's Aaron Uttam Chandani. Thank you for your question, which is this. Find the missing letter from this group. Mm. Oh, my word. I just, I'm just seeing... Sorry, I say UK game shows on the bottom. That can't, I assure you, that can't be. <laughs> <laughs> Having boggle um, flashbacks now. <sighs> why there's got to be a logic. Yes, that's logic. There's um, very few vowels. Are they first letters or something? What would be a range of four by four like this? Oh, first letters is good. Um, um, like it's not like bar bar black sheep. Have you got any wool? But in first letters of 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 a song or D D B E. Oh, oh I bet it can't be. It can't be uh, notes because L L S and Y and M. Mm. Um, <laughs> well, at least we've got a one in twenty six chance. <laughs> I think it'd be awful to guess it to get right though. Uh, I'm trying to work out the logic of it. Um, I think the song was quite good. But... All right, Lewis. Yeah, as you say, you've got about a four percent chance. Go for one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Nick's initial guess that the bottom line is UK game shows, and go with you. No, it's N. Right. Now you're saying it could be something to do with first letters. Yeah. And also, this group can mean not just this group of letters, but this group of people. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> so, Nick, wow. you were the answer all along. <laughs> well, we all do that anyway. <laughs> wow. There we go. Good. This is getting quite interesting for all. <laughs> I Let's see uh, where we're going to go with next. Uh, who wants to pick next? Uh, I think it's Nick's turn. Oh, I'll go for number eight. On, Nick. Number eight. Okie dokie. Many Muslim men wear a turban, fez, or a skull cap called a takia. Other possible hat styles, such as the Homburg, Panama, or Bota, for example, uh, would be impractical. Why? Oh. It's got something to do with the brim, because the, 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 the first three don't have one. Do they balance? Would they balance something on their head or with a, with a takia? Like, wouldn't be possible. Not with a turban on. Uh, it could be a, a specific type of turban. Mm. And presumably, a Homburg Panama and boats are not flat. No, a straw boat is, is incredibly flat. It's okay. like a, a, a well, barbershop. Panama is also made out of straw, isn't it? Panama hat has lots of holes in. Oh, okay. Um, Why would it be impractical? There's got to be a practical use, aside from, well, good in Scrabble. Um, <laughs> but a fez is is quite a large hat. Yeah. Oh, good luck. <laughs> okay, Lewis, any ideas at all? Uh, I'm going to go with... Um, the fact that the first three don't have a brim, and I'm guessing it's something to do with the brim of a hat. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to give you second bite of the cherry. Um, Why? Uh, the, the... <sighs> I, I don't know why the brim would be impractical, though, I'm afraid. All right, fair enough. Okay, I will tell you that's that's the correct answer, but I'm not going to give you the point because you haven't really got the the second half <laughs> of the thing. Why would Muslim Why would Muslim men not want to brim on their hat? Is it Muslim. something to do with looking some looking? Upwards? What do Muslims do a lot, like five times a day? Oh, okay. they kneel down. Yeah. Um, Ah, the forehead has to touch the floor when they're doing the praying, and if they wear the first three hats, they don't have to take them off. Okay, yep. Which is why oh. the uh, it, it's why the fez was developed, I believe. It, it, oh. it originally had a small brim, and then they thought, well, this is this is silly. We'll just 
cut the brim off and then we can just wear it all day and not have to keep taking it off when we pray hmm. so you got halfway there uh but you didn't get the other half of the story unfortunately so i'm going to claim that as one for us i'm afraid okay uh let's go back with you lewis uh okay we're going to number four number four Okay, dokie. This has been sent in by Chris Philpot. Uh, it's a rather superb question. I've been a staple of English education since the 1860s. Though believers may suggest otherwise, I've been debunked by atheists, discredited by scientists, and disproved by foreign species of reindeer on more than one occasion. What is it? There's the three R's of education, isn't it? You know, right, reading, writing, arithmetic been debunked by atheists. Disproved so, by scientists. Disproved by foreign species. Okay, what's interesting about reindeer? Um, uh, antlers, caribou, elk live in the northern, house, northern Arctic Circle. Uh, uh, stable English education since the 1860s. Why, what, what was exciting in the 1860s? Um, milk. Milk. Uh, why would milk have been debunked by atheists? Um, <laughs> what would an atheist debunk? Proof of God. Oh, God. But, it's, but scientists are also discredited. It. I would, it can't be evolution. Um, no. Oh. <laughs> Okay, Lewis, uh, best of British to you. Give me an answer. <laughs> um, oh. Natural, uh, not natural selection, the other one. Um, ah, I've got to, I, I'm just going to say natural selection. I know it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Get ready to groan. <sighs> oh. Yes, so, very good. believers, it, it does follow. But atheists, scientists, and foreign species and reindeer yeah. don't follow the rule. Well done. So I'm English not education. Was... That reaction. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was literally about English education, the subject of English, and yeah. uh, that's when the rule was supposedly uh, popularised. It was thought to to knock around before then, but that's that's when it started to regularly appear in uh, textbooks and of course there's all sorts of um, additional things uh, that go on after it um, and exceptions and so on but uh, anyway, that's the basic rule that everyone knows and, and uh, that's what it is right <laughs> you uh, I, if I didn't say this before because I um, but for people that are joining us uh, it's the first team to seven that wins and there's only three questions left so you've got to get all three of these right otherwise for the first time the audience are gonna win <gasps> So, oh uh, this is a vital choice, and uh, <laughs> uh, Lewis, I'm going to let you pick who chooses. Uh, let's keep going in rotation and go, uh, Dan, pick us a good one. Right. 10 out of 10, number 10. Number 10. Okay. Ah, uh, this is a goodie. <laughs> <laughs> Which two letters are missing from this photo? of a South American capital. South American capital city. Answer. Oh, go on then. N, N and S. Wow. Correct. I'm assuming it's Quito from Ecuador, and Ecuador is named after the equator, so I'm assuming that is where the equator goes through. Wow. Uh -huh. Well done, Dan. Oh, you can see the little line at the bottom as well, yes. Yep. That's absolutely right. That was very quick work. I mean, I, I, how did you know it wasn't like east-west rather than north-south? Well, as it was on the equator, east-west wouldn't make as much sense, and uh, there's no Greenwich Meridian yeah. doesn't go through South America. I did <laughs> yeah. wonder what the Spanish for south and north was going to be for a second there, but they just decided to ignore that in my head. <laughs> uh well, I, I would imagine that there would be Norte and uh, I'm looking quickly, Sur. So you, it would probably work that way as well. Uh, yes. Now, do you, do you know anything else uh, about this place? 
Not a clue. Uh, it's actually built in completely the wrong place. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when when the, it's all because of the French. Uh, when the French came, they were working on a um, some some sort of spherical model that uh, sort of basically had the Earth the wrong way. Rather than it being oblate as in squashed at the poles, they thought it was squashed at the sides, uh, and that error was was sort of just continued to go on until the nineteen seventies. Uh, until, of course, people then in invented things like GPS satellites, and then they went, oh, actually, this isn't quite the right place. Uh, <laughs> but when they built this monument, they thought, well, it's, it's, it's always been the place that we've uh, held this monument, so we'll just, we'll just compound the error and, and keep it there. Um, you may have seen on, on Facebook uh, this video uh, where someone takes a... a, a a sink on both sides of the equator and then tries to prove the Coriolis effect that the the water goes out one way uh, and then he moves it to the other side and it goes out the other way and puts it directly on the equation and it goes straight down. Of course, the, the trick is just the way he starts the water off with a plug. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's not actually true. Uh, but this is, this, this is about 240 meters away, I believe. And they've sort of built another strip where the real GPS... Uh, for zero does read as correct, uh, but it's just um, a, a sort of back street somewhere. It's not a special monument or anything. Uh, but some tourists uh, do still uh, go to that one as well. Okay, very good. So uh, that makes things interesting. You've got an extra minute to play with now. Um, you might need it. Uh, because we've, still speed <laughs> we've, still, we've still got the speed round, someone hidden in those two questions. Um, okay, Lewis, up to you. Uh, okay, so the speed round tends to be number 12, so I'm going to go with number 6. <laughs> Do you think I would be that lazy to keep the speed round in the same one each, each time? You get the easiest yes. one in number 1 each time, so yes. <laughs> well, you'd be correct. <laughs> <laughs> six office workers are trying to guess the size of the government's majority at the upcoming UK general election. Which of these predictions is most likely to be exactly right wow okay so my initial thought is that there's only one which is even mm -hmm. and oh. it could be to do with yeah. like the, the number of seats and the way it would split you know the, the majority is going to have an even number of the, well, the the size of the majority is going to have an even number. I'm not sure that I'm I'm not sure that's true. You can have you can have 351. So the majority is just how much you have over half the house. Um, so it's quite possible you have 351 seats, 52 seats. That majority of one or two, or whatever okay. the number is. Um, okay. But I think if you wanted, if, if you're right, if if you can't find anything else, that's as good a guess as as any. I'm um, happy with that. Uh. I'm trying to think why it'd be most likely to be exactly right. Um, exactly right is the key here, isn't it? Yeah. So there's got to be a logic, and the fact that it's the only one that's even. Okay, Lewis, do you want to give me an answer, or do you want your extra minute? Uh, I don't think any of us were going to come up with anything in the extra minute, so we'll save that for the speed round, I guess, and uh, go with 106. Is right. Right. So imagine that there's 10 MPs only, okay? So if it's, then there's only two parties, uh, like the government party and all the opposition put together. Then if it's 5-5, five, five, the majority is zero. But if one of those goes to the other party, it would be 6-4, so the majority is two. And then if another one goes across the other side, it's 7-3, so the majority is four. Um, now, because yes, of 650 sense. MPs, um then uh, i mean like you know there might be special things for um by elections and things but once everybody's re-elected re back in uh then uh yes the majority will, will be an even number with the current number of mps that we've got and do you know how many mps we have at the minute we just said 650 so i imagine it's about that uh no i believe it's zero 
Because once oh. a general election's called, everybody loses <laughs> their job. <laughs> everybody loses their job, and you just you just have to call yourself the former MP for. Uh, I think you, you fell for that one, Nick. I, really <laughs> I think you were baited into that one. Unbelievable. You know yeah, well, I just thought it, you might find it an interesting bit of oh, trivia. The, the, the currently, the, apart from the civil servants running the country, there is no actual uh, number of uh, MPs. Uh, okay, very exciting. Uh, and I'm thrilled I've balanced the questions a bit better this time. Uh, okay, so as you uh, guessed, uh, number 12 is a speed round. So uh, that means there's going to be three questions. You have to give me the correct answer to all three to get it right, uh, but you do have your bonus minutes in hand. Uh, I'll still ask you at the end if you want it or not, but um, I presume you will do. Uh, it, that's up to you. Okay, uh, your one minute for your first minute, anyway, starts now. Uh, which famous landmarks have these nicknames? The Long Graveyard, Nuns in a Scrum, The Gateshead Flasher. Yeah, purely the gates of Flash is the Angel of the North because uh, everything's spread out, I suppose. The arms spread out. I don't know if she's naked or not. And she's somewhere near Gateshead, I believe. Yeah, gates, that that uh, makes sense, yeah. Nuns in a scrum, so that's something. Um, where. Which famous land? How? What? So normally there's a connection. So if we're talking about famous like statues of some kind. Yeah. Uh, um, I will just say not necessarily. They are just landmarks. Okay. Okay. The long graveyard then could be. Uh, what's that big? Ref is it the reflecting pond outside, like Washington D.C. or something? You know, in, that you see in in movies, things like that. The big long rectangular lake. Okay, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> sure, surely they have a proper name. We don't know. It worked. Yes, but it's nicknames. We don't call the Angel of the North the Gateshead Flasher. No, but we, we do know what we're referring to when you say the Angel of the North. Um, whereas the, the pond outside. Why? <laughs> it's the rough. Okay. Oh. Lewis, I presume you want your next minute? Uh, yes, please. Okay, here you go. Uh, I think it's called the Reflecting Pond. Or, or... Okay, well, if you're happy with uh, that, then. Well, not. It's either that or like oh. the, the Arlington military grade, you know, or something like that. But... Is Nuns in a Scrum the Sydney Opera House? Because of its unusual curved, Whoa, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, curved, I, uh, I can see that, and I can't think of anything else. So Something better. Okay, so we've still got the long graveyard. I think I've led us down a path that's wrong. I know. I was, I was uh, trying to think of anything, anything better. Um, so it's long as a graveyard. Where do things go to die? Perhaps ships. Um, <laughs> Worthy. Um, uh, oh dear. I think we're going to kick ourselves. Oh dear. It's, it's, it's not like a World War One or Two thing, is it? Right. Lewis, uh, I'd like your three answers in order, please. Oh, God. So the first one we're going to get wrong, but I'm going to go with uh, Dan's. Uh, Reflecting Pond. Uh, mm -hmm. For number two, I'm going for the Sydney Opera House, and for number three, we're going for the Angel of the North. So you got the Angel of the North first, and I can tell you that's correct. You then went on to Nuns in the Scrum, and you went Sydney Opera House. I can tell you that's correct. And then the Long Grave Guard is wrong. Mm. Oh. Great oh, Wall of Time. So, can you surmise why it's called that? I a lot of people died whilst building it. It's, it's a long wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's probably one of the longest graveyards that you, well, you probably ever see. Yeah, there were so many people died through the making of it. Um, just probably through old age, given how long it took. Uh, but it, that's the nickname for it. It's called the Long Graveyard. Ah, there we go. Close. Close, close, but no cigar. I have literally just thrown hey. my penance on the table and upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really mind who wins, but it was a, it was a great game. Uh, well done uh, to everyone, and uh, thanks for everyone for some great questions in this episode. Uh, if you are wondering uh, what you need to do to send in some questions, simply just send your question ideas to this email address. <laughs> <laughs> 
or uh, perhaps more simply you could use that one if you really must and uh, just you don't have to worry too much about the wording we can help you uh, buff that up but if you just uh, give us um the your rough idea of, of the question and uh please include the answer otherwise i'll be there for, <laughs> for hours going what is it what is it and then you might see your question on a future episode uh okay well that's just about it for today so thanks very much uh, to nick well, thank you and dan thank you very much and to losing team captain lewis murphy <laughs> <laughs> thank you and never let me be captain again <laughs> Okay, well, that's going to be a rage. Uh, thanks very much <laughs> for listening, and hope you join us again next time. Bye-bye for now.